and shit. Yeah, the camera's been on, man. We've been on, man. Well, you know I gotta at least give my man a few minutes. I gotta, Jay win. it ain't a show without this nigga. Come on. Right. He about to come out. Oh, yeah, I mean, he like he got an entrance. He about to come out, nigga, come here. Go have your your own band playing behind you. Go be a nigga with a hand drum talking about. There it is. Uh oh. Yes sir. Yes sir. I like how we got one speaker. We used to have a whole sound system. We didn't oh. have shit. They had it. Now we got one speaker. Now we don't got That's one speaker. That's okay. <laughs> We're in the rebuilding phase. Exactly. I thought no one was our speaker. Damn. You only got one speaker, my boy? No, we got another one, but that ain't hooked up to the other one. Hey. Craig, yeah. we only got one speaker, bro. Craig, mm -hmm. put the chicken down like he tired of us asking him for shit. <laughs> God damn it. OG been here for about two hours. Yeah. What? No cap. We can't play with the time. You know that though. He you, know, you see the blackness that's going on right here. That's why he been extremely patient with him. Yeah. yeah, that OG got the patience of Job today. Appreciate it, bro. Got a bit left on you, niggas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. They left on you niggas and went live. Well, Them what? niggas ain't got shit going right over that motherfucker. What's that strip <laughs> club down this way? I don't know. What's the strip club out this way? The one over here, uh, it's Diamond. Diamond, that's the one. I, I, I'm gonna shoot up the diamonds right quick and I'll be back. Oh. We almost in there. I'm finna get out this shit. What you on? Yeah, Instagram, this shit drinking. She don't be talking about nothing. Right. Instagram be trying to make me feel like I ain't important no more. Right. This shit don't be talking about nothing. Instagram don't be talking about a whole bunch of shit. Hell no. I think we had too much fun on it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Ooh, lit, cause people was just not showing who they really were. You like, I can't believe it, what they motherfuckers. Now you know. Now you know what's going on. Now, now motherfuckers don't want to show you how they really are. They trying to <coughs> switch it around. Goddamn. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, that's how you wake up the room. Mm -hmm. well, now we got two from? speakers. From both of them. Now speakers. we got two speakers. Dang. That shit was loud like it came from this guy, all right? Man, I almost blew my high eye. <laughs> Everybody jumped, they were like, uh, I was like, oh, uh, pass my pistol. Hey. <laughs> we telling, we doing the show behind a fence today, my boy. No cap. We in the backyard just talking big shit. We went from the trap to the backyard. Uh huh. But this temporary though. Sad light right there. Yeah, this temporary. It's gonna be a big old dog. Cause you know we done moved into the new studio, bro. We over here 85 ways. No yeah. Cap. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah, they, talk, they said they went ready. I was like, make it ready. <laughs> they damn sure said that, and I was like, hold up, wait. <laughs> Our fence ain't straight. Let's do another day. But we couldn't, so we had to come this way. <laughs> hey. Yeah, we in the look. Hey, it's temporary, man. We come here. beautiful because it's ours, man. Yeah. It belongs to us. It's, it's, it's the result of hard work. Still right. in the trap, nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. We just upgraded, man. They got a place, a place for in. us to come and, and be in charge and run shit the way we want to run it, man. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's like when you get a new spot and you got to sleep on an air mattress for two nights till you your bed come. Right. For two nights, two months. Man, you just be thugging like Could've that. Could've stay in that motherfucker. You like, this shit lit. No cap. You we the that? landlords. Pay who? No landlords. You right. <laughs> And now that I'm looking around, I really want to say, man, cut some of these goddamn the lights off. I was yeah. like, hey, we definitely got to pay the electric bill. We ain't got no land, bro. We still got to pay the electric bill in this moment. Y'all got we to pick and choose what you want to do. We might have to see what it look like with the house lights off. I'm saying it. God damn. Y'all like, can't see it. Because these motherfuckers die in house, so it look like we in the front time house. We'll oh, they, don't like the they don't go off. Cat can do it on his mean? phone. Yeah, Ryan got it on his phone. Got you ain't got the shit on your phone? You can cut Cat, these, you, can, you can cut them motherfuckers off. Not, not 
Yeah. These permanent? Well, we got to be still perfect What you mean? Y'all just don't know how to cut them off. They were dark when we came in, huh? No. Not in here. They'd have been on the motion sensors. So. Oh, well, sit y'all ass down. Stop acting like you're doing something important. Everybody stood up like that's going to make it happen. Don't tell you. They go nowhere. Which is the other side of the room? Yeah. It don't matter. We ain't here today, though, DC, and no. we get ready to keep this show real black. No cap. I'm talking about like black like a haircut on the front porch. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about black like when your sister got her ear burnt because your mama was pressing her hair for Easter Sunday. Oh, she did it on purpose. Right. I'm talking about black <laughs> like having a car in y'all yard that mm -hmm. don't run no more, but it got all the baby clothes in it. Yep, you need it for storage. Right. I'm talking about black <laughs> like your dog black and he don't eat dog food. He just eat the shit that y'all did and make it to. No cap. Right. I'm no talking cap. about black. Like, you know your mama a good lady, but she got almost one too many baby daddies black. Mm. Like, if she had one more, then you a judge. Right. Right. Like, everybody got like two kids apiece. Every daddy got two kids apiece. Right. And saying. then it's like them for real. Yeah, no cap. No sense. cap. Right. I feel what you're saying. I'm talking about for everybody who grew up in the hood and your grandma was loose. Everybody grandma in the hood got one baby daddy that they don't want to talk about. Mm hmm. It's always your uncle daddy, and he always got his own daddy. Ain't that crazy? Right. How he do that? Out of 12 kids. He got his own daddy. He got his own daddy. That crazy. Grandma I'm, loose. I'm talking about, we about to keep it so black. So today. black. And we got a very special guest in the house with us today. Okay, let's talk, man. Now, I don't even know where to start. I'll start walk, with, man. first of all, he's an activist. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. He's an author. Producer. Yes, sir. Producer, uh -huh. filmmaker, uh -huh. a hell of a writer. Yes, he do. A singer. Oh, yeah. Uh, Motherfucker makes some cold ass music. Yes, he a composer. Do. One of the brothers that, that were like, when he speak, people listen because we believe what he's saying and we know that he know what the fuck he talking about. Right, he right. He then gave us hit after hit, volume after volume of Hidden Colors, then yes, put sir. us up on so much information Come that on. we weren't even privy to Come as on. a black community. Talk your talk. Mm -hmm. I feel yes, like he's very important to the culture and where we're going and got in the conscience of all of that. We've been trying to put this shit together for a minute and we mm -hmm. finally made it happen on our movie <laughs> day. Yes. None other than Who? Tariq Nasheed. Yeah. 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 Love that intro, brother. You deserve it. Yes, yes, First of all, yeah. with your brothers for the longest, man. Much them. respect to you and, and much love to all the work that you're doing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're speaking life into the community, man. How did all this start? Man, I started doing the um, Hidden Color series. Well, let's go back. We yeah, because yeah, because I, I've, I've done stuff way before Hidden yeah, Color. I, right, right, right. Like yeah. one, of, one of the main ones, I got to say, The Mac Within. Yes. The Mac Within, I read this book when I was in middle school, man. And this yeah. is still one of the best books that I've ever read because it teaches you how to empower yourself as a man and the things that you need to know as a man, mm -hmm. not just from what you need to do in regards to your interactions with women, but what you need to do with, in regards to your interactions within yourself. Absolutely. Right. And that's they always try to bring that book game. up, like yeah. when you go on big platforms to try to discredit the shit right. that you're saying. They right. be like, oh, he wrote a book about being a pimp. No, yes. it's not about, not being, about a being a pimp. You feel me? Right. But the title yeah. with the white people, and they yeah. always try to make it seem like, he was pimping and pandering and right. all that type of bullshit. Right, and the book was nothing like that. Right. The, we had the Mac Within, and before the Mac Within, we had a book called The Art of Mackin'. I wrote the book in 99, came out in 2000. Huge best-selling book. Right. So a quarter of a million copies. That, yes, we did that up. And we do here. I wrote that book at the time. You had a bunch of books out, like Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, all of these relationship books that was telling men corny shit that right. really didn't work. So at the time, I said, I want to tell dudes real relationship advice from a real guy's perspective unapologetically. So I said, I'm going to have a book called The Art of Mackin, talking about how to holla, how to get your shit together, how to carry yourself as a man from a lot of the street perspectives. Right, right, right. And people respected where I was coming from. Women got that book more than men at one point. Women wanted to see where, how we really thought as men. Mm -hmm. Because when dudes write books for women, they know dudes are kind of putting on a facade. Pandering? They know they're pandering. And women don't like a nigga who's pandering. Mm -hmm. I've seen some of you guys, your live shows, when you guys are keeping the 100, the women fans are into it more than the dudes. Right. Mm -hmm. Women right, respect right. the dude who's going to be brutally honest with them. And that's what I was doing with my books. It took off and... Um, I created a whole lane, man. The whole um, pickup artist lane started because of that. Then I morphed into talking about relationships as it relates to race. Right. Because all of that ties into the same thing, too. Mm -hmm. um, around 2010, I started producing a film called Hidden Colors. Right. And I started doing that because <clears throat> at the time, a lot of the movies that were out 
with like the blind side, the help, the butler, stuff like that, and movies that were disempowering. The I white see, savior movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. we would come out. I, I remember seeing Precious and seeing the black people coming out of the movie theater just deflated. That movie just killed our spirit. And movies like that would kill our spirit. So I said, we need to counter that stuff. We need to have something that balances all of this negativity out. So I said, I'm gonna put together a movie that's so damn black and unapologetic and going in on white supremacy. Mm. Because a lot of people are afraid to do that. When we talk right. about racism, we make this shit real vague. Well, mm -hmm. racism is out there, but there's some discrimination, there's some hatred, there's some bigotry. Now, let's put a name on it. Mm -hmm. There's a certain group within the dominant society who practice something called white supremacy racism. Let's call that out, and then let's take it from there. So I did the Hidden Colors series. Well, I did the first Hidden Colors, mm -hmm. 2011. No movie had been done like that before, where you're just talking about all of this untold black history. I didn't know how people were going to receive the movie. Mm -hmm. um, we had a screening in Los Angeles and we had a screening in um, some other cities. And I'm in the theater with a hat on, like, if people don't like this shit, I'm going to sneak up out of here. Right. You know? And after the movie was done, people just sat there in shock. It was like people had to be mm -hmm. debriefed because they've never seen all of that information right. about themselves that was so powerful. And. The series just took off from there. We have five volumes. We um, did Hit Colors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I did a movie called 1804 about the history of Haiti. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, my last film was a film called Buck Breaking uh -huh. that talked about the sexual exploitation that has been done to black people and the sexual agendas. So that one was a huge seller. So, you know, that's, I just found my lane with the movie game, man. Well, you know what was, was real crazy. impressive about the movies, though? It's like... <clears throat> some of the like the information that you have in there like yeah. you can tell that it, it's well researched like you had the clip of george washington carver's actual actual His speaking voice, voice yeah a lot of folks never heard him speak exactly mm -hmm. yeah. like, it'd be shit like that that'll fuck you up and like the the pictures of sarah bartman yeah yeah outside of you know the one that's famous so it's yeah. like you go deep into this shit and it'd be fucking me up just to sit there and watch this That's shit. why it's hidden. There's a lot of information that they'll just tell you half of it. They don't tell you the other half. Mm -hmm. George Washington Carver, speaking to him, this brother, his voice was very high-pitched. Right. And a lot of folks didn't know that. His voice was high-pitched because they castrated him when he was a kid because he was adopted by a white family. They didn't want him having sex with their daughter. Right. You see? There's so much hidden history. Everywhere you go, it's hidden. We're in Atlanta right now. You go into the heart of Atlanta, there's a statue of Henry Grady. And you hear people in Atlanta say that they're Grady babies. Mm -hmm. There's Grady Hospital, Grady School. Henry Grady was known for being a white supremacist. His job was to come down to the South and to codify the South and the North after the Civil War, saying, hey, look, we're all white. We have to maintain white supremacy and keep these Negroes down. That is our job. And that's the only thing he's known for. A lot of folks don't know that. He's not a politician. He wasn't a, 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 a bank owner. He wasn't no businessman. He was just known as the white supremacist of his day. And and there's a big ass statue in the middle of Atlanta of Henry Grady. Mm. You see, there's hidden history all over the place. I was just in Kennesaw the other day. I have a museum. We just bought a museum in Los Angeles called the Hidden History Museum. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You gotta go check it out. People don't understand. Outside of Atlanta, it's a whole different damn world. Right. The rest of Georgia is not like Atlanta. So we went 30 minutes outside of um, Atlanta. We went to Kennesaw. We were looking for some mm -hmm. artifacts for our museum. There's a Klan store right in Kennesaw. They frame it as a Civil War store, but inside the store they have Klan memorabilia. They have um, nigger dolls, literally with the word nigger dolls, for sale in this thing, right in Kennesaw. And they've been trying to get rid of this store and get it up out of there. But this the just shows, yeah, it's been on the news. So this just shows how deeply ingrained anti-black racism is and how close it is to us. And we don't really see it like we should. And it's surprisingly a lot of places like that. I did a thing uh, up in, in Tennessee. Yeah. And it's this guy calls himself the father of the Confederacy. And he has a store where he has all types of racist memorabilia and all types of, I mean, pictures of black people that you can come by and, and it's just like and shit. all mm -hmm. types of stuff that's that's <clears throat> just available and 
open. And the Klan was started even, in Tennessee. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Nathan yeah. Bethard, um, Bedford, um, Bedford Forrest. Nathan, yeah. Nathan, Nathan, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They started no, the Klan out there in Tennessee. So they're real big on that, that, that memorabilia and that imagery. And they sell a lot of this stuff on the underground. Mm -hmm. A lot of these trinkets of black folks getting lynched and hung. And they actually still sell body parts of black people. Because remember, when black people were getting lynched, they would sever the body parts mm -hmm. and sell them on the underground. Mm -hmm. When Nat Turner got killed, they would sell his body parts and they boiled his, his, his body and sold the oil. The family of Nat Turner just got his skull back a few years ago because they were selling his skull on the underground. So Damn. these people, they do some real sick stuff out here, man. Wow, yeah. man. Mm. NFL playoff action continues. We're one step closer to Super Bowl 57 and for the NFL divisional round, check out DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 and get 200 in free bets instantly. Plus, all new and existing customers can take a shot at an even bigger payout with DraftKings stepped up same game parlays. Boost your NFL winnings with each leg you add up to 100%. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code 85SOUTH. New customers can bet $5 on the NFL Divisional Round and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code 85SOUTH. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER. 1-800-426-2537 in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Wyoming. 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona. 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado and New Hampshire. 888-789-7777. Visit http dot forward slash forward slash ccpg dot org slash chat. Connecticut. One eight hundred bets off. Iowa. One eight seven 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 zero stop. Louisiana. Eight seven seven eight H O P E N Y. Text Hope New York for New York. Visit opgr dot org. Oregon. Call text Tennessee Red Line. One eight hundred eight eight nine nine seven eight nine Tennessee or one eight eight five three two three five zero zero for Virginia. Twenty one plus eighteen plus Wyoming physically present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, West Virginia, Virginia, Wyoming, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee. Only minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See HTTP DraftKings.com Sportsbook for details. See HTTP <laughs> colon forward forward DraftKings.com forward slash Sportsbook for details. That's amazing. Now, yeah. speaking of the Hidden Colors movies, you, in my opinion, are responsible for introducing to the world to a lot of the people that we know now. Yeah. That, uh, you know, the people that we look to as, you know, influencers in the, in the woke community and right. all of that. Mm -hmm. Like, how was your 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 vetting process and finding these people did you have one or did you just let them come to you um i looked out for them when i first started doing hidden colors the way i was going to do it at first it was just going to be me on film talking about history and the film was going to be called secret niggas so i, I said oh, that might be a little too rough that's and a mixtape. Yeah, yeah, that's a mixtape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, secret was, niggas. Secret niggas. Uh, 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 Taking over the underground bro. <laughs> you did. Harriet, <laughs> I see you. <laughs> DJ <laughs> Kuta. <Coulter. laughs> uh, For real. So I said, I want this to play in school. So mm -hmm. let me be, you know, because if you look at the Hidden Colors films, most of them, we don't do a lot of profanity in them. Hidden Colors 5, we do a little cursing in there, but most of them is very clean because I want them in schools. So I said, let me do, let me change the name. Let me call it Hidden Colors and let me get a lot of scholars that I study that I like. A lot of these scholars were popular on the underground scene, but they just kind of almost retired to a certain degree. So I started getting some of the people that I loved and respected, like Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, who's a genius and who's very underrated. And we're doing a lot of things paying homage to her in our museum because she wrote a book called The ISIS Papers that really broke down yeah. systematic white supremacy and how we need to understand it. ISIS the book? ISIS Papers. The keys to the color. She was a brilliant psychiatrist up in D.C., my brother Chico's hometown. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And um, this sister was very controversial because she broke racism down 
and, and made it simple by saying white supremacy and systematic racism is about genetic survival of the dominant society. Mm -hmm. the, the root of them practicing racism is for their survival because interacting and mixing with black people, the offspring is gonna be black, so in order to thwart that, you have to control black sexuality. That's why when black people were lynched, they were castrated. That's why they had miscegenation laws that present, prevented black people from marrying those in the dominant society. So she broke that down and that woke up a lot of people. Then I started getting other scholars like Dr. Kaba, Brother James Small, Brother Phil Valentine. Um, I, Nas was in one of my things. I, I had so many phenomenal people in the Hidden Colors series and it just took off from there. So what started your journey? What made you want to go this route to just enlighten black people on the real, what's going on in the real world? Um, you know what, because we needed it. And we always say stuff like, well, somebody <laughs> needs to make a movie about our history. See, right. we get into that thing. Right. Somebody needs to do this. It would be good if somebody made a movie talking about the real um, revolutionaries. Right. It would be good. And nobody ever steps up and do it, does it? You know what I'm saying? So I said, let me do it. I know a little bit about um, television. When I was writing my relationship books, I would do a lot of stuff with VH1 and MTV. So I would look at a lot of stuff behind the scenes and kind of pick up some game. And I said, okay, let me just give it a shot. I'll put together something and see how it goes and it just took off from there yeah well speaking the game man like i said i i got it hard back on that book the mac within just because it was so influential to me like yeah you know and, and you talking about doing everything that you're doing for the black community like at that stage in your in your life and career what made you want to get that level of game out because you know that's one of the main rules is yeah, you know. to be sold not to be told but yeah. it's like you know you put it in the book and gave it out pretty much to whoever wanted to, you know, have it. Yeah, so what all, made you want to do that? And there's also a saying, the game is for those who are worthy of receiving the game. Right. You understand? Run it back, run it back, run it back. The game is for those who are worthy of receiving the game. You know? Judge. Because sometimes you give a, some game to a nigga who ain't really there mentally, he'll take the game and fuck it up. He'll right. take it and revamp it and do something goofy with it. Yes, you understand? The real so, pimp. Yeah, yeah. So when I wrote the book, The Art of Mac, and, um, at the time, I was a single dude, and me and my friends, we would just kind of challenge ourselves using different techniques on how to deal with women in the clubs and the dating scene. And I learned, man, the way you deal with women and the way you deal with relationships, that's the way you deal with business. If you straight up and down and you are headstrong in your relationships, you're going to carry on that same mindset into your business dealings. You can look at a dude and see how he does business by the way he treats his chick. If he's a shady nigga beating on his broad and, and doing little deceptive stuff, you can't really trust that nigga on some business shit, you know what I'm saying? So the way we deal with business oftentimes coincide with the way we deal in relationships. That's why it's all about how you carry yourself as a man. That's the number one thing when it comes to dating and relationships. Because when I put the books out, people always ask me, well, what, are there any lines you can give me to say to women? I tell dudes all the time, man, it don't matter what you say, it's how you carry yourself. Because some of the most powerful dudes are silent dudes who don't have to say nothing. It's just a vibe that they have. It's a certain confidence that they have. That's what women feel, man. Women feel dudes' energy. Your words are inconsequential. If you have the right vibe, the right confidence, and the right energy, you can say anything to a woman and they'll feel that shit. Right. So who were some of the people that saw worthy of you being a recipient of the game? Yeah, there were some players out there in um, LA that I soaked up a lot of game from, especially in Oakland. I hung around a lot of Oak Town players who would come down from LA, and uh, I would just soak up game with those guys, just being in the streets with them, just peeping them. And I always say, man, you can learn stuff from everybody from all walks of life. Man, mm -hmm. if you hang around a drug dealer, you might learn something positive from that drug dealer. You might learn how this dude works his books and keeps his numbers together. You know what I'm saying? You can find some positive out of anything. Um, not that you have to follow that path. I always tell people, you don't really want to touch that street shit if it ain't in here. The shit got to be in you, not on you. Mm -hmm. And that's why so many niggas get caught up out here because they see some shit on TV or a rap record and they say, oh, let me go out here and start trapping and let me go out here and put somebody on the blade and you go out here and get your throat slit because you playing with this shit and you got to be down with it 100% and it's a mindset that goes with that that is not glamorous. The streets is not as glamorous as people make it seem. Right. All the players and hustlers I know are paranoid. They're always looking over their shoulder and when you get in the game, your next mindset should be how are you going to cycle out the game? You can't be in the game forever. The minute you get in the street shit and you get a good stride going, you should be planning an exit strategy. And what <laughs>
Hey, yeah. when you write, you write. Yes, Keep sir. going. Yes, Keep sir. going. I, ain't, I wasn't cutting you <laughs> yes, off. Yes, indeed. But yeah, uh, uh, you see a lot of dudes who get caught up on some street shit are niggas who never wanted to get out the game. They want to stay in the game forever. Like those Frank Lucas type niggas. You 60 years old still trying to trap. No, nigga, get legit and get up out of that shit. Like white <clears> boys <throat> do. Like the white boys, they they get into all types of illegal shit. The Kennedys. Yeah, the Kennedys, Trump. Yeah. Trump's dad was out there had a whole house. You know what I'm saying? His granddad, his grandfather. The Kennedys, they were trapping liquor. You know, a lot of these powerful families, they started off on some street shit, you dig? And then they cycled out of the game and then they got legit. Black people were doing that for a minute. You had the Jones brothers, some brothers up there in Chicago, mm -hmm. who were the numbers runners. They were running numbers. They were the ones who basically gave the government the idea for the lottery. The government gets a lot of ideas from us. They nice. weren't doing lottery. They get a lot of shit from us. Um, even the free lunch program. They weren't doing free lunch until the Black Panthers were doing that. Facts. You dig? They get yeah, yeah. a lot of stuff from us. We as Foundation of Black Americans, we created a whole bunch of shit that's well, never talked got about. A, uh, I don't remember which volume it was, but you got an excerpt about black people and gold teeth. Mm -hmm. You were talking about... What was I how, saying about it? You were saying that that started like right after slavery. The slaves started putting like gold on their teeth. Maybe. Well, we talk about this in a new movie. We got a new movie called American Maroon talking about um, black people who got up off these plantations and started killing these slave owners and living in the swamps. There's a big swamp in Virginia, North Carolina called the Great Dismal Swamp. That's where a lot of black folks would live after they would escape slavery. Then they would go back and forth from the Carolinas to Florida. Florida was a big maroon colony. They had something called the Seminole War. That was really a slave rebellion. And that was one of the most successful slave rebellions, but they never frame it like that. They frame it as an Indian war because they don't want to give the impression that the government lost to a bunch of black people. Florida had a bunch of black people with gold teeth and dreadlocks beating the shit out of the white supremacists and burning down plantations and nobody ever talks about it. Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the shit I was talking that, about. It's like you so be coming up with shit like that that it be like, nigga, what the fuck we gonna find the rest of this shit in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, of all that information, like, what piece of information shocked you the most? Like, of oh, all man. the things that you've give, given to the public, like, what shocked you the most that you've learned? Because you be searching for oh, all that. And the, and the tell on it is, like, yeah. have you found some shit that you was like, I can't say that. I can't put this out. Mm. I'm trying to see what sh has shocked me because we've done so much and... The alligator bait shit shocked yeah, me. Yeah, that was some heavy stuff. What happened? Yeah, they would, um, during the 1800s, early 1900s, white people would kidnap black kids in Florida and use black babies to bait alligators. They would tie black babies up and put them out in the swamps and let alligators eat them so they can capture the alligators. They have gator bait memorabilia in museums and stores, especially in Florida. They would do some real sick shit, man. They would do some real sick stuff out here, and we have to call that stuff out. Um, one of the sick things that, that kind of shocked me, well, I wouldn't even say shocked me, but um, they would rape a lot of black men on plantations. And that's something that's never talked about. We talked about that in my movie, Bug Breaking. This was very much so in Jamaica. Um, Jamaica was a slave breaking plantation. If a slave didn't get his mind right, they would send them to Jamaica. They would rape brothers in Jamaica. That's why today, Jamaicans hate homosexuality. They're very much against it, and that's why, because of the culture of it. People always talk about the homophobia in Jamaica, but they never put it in the right cultural context. Yeah. Damn, man. Like, Damn. It, this, this, like, this not disenfranchising to you when you reading this shit and getting all Bro, this information? So like, up. You, you like, be like, man, fuck it, no, nigga. I, I used to make furniture out of black people. Yeah, yeah. But you know and what? they still got this shit. Mm -hmm. But I don't, get, I don't get depressed about it because for every bad, we have to look at some of the great things that we've done. We created damn near everything that's right. in the household. Foundation of Black Americans, we created the modern doorknob. We created the modern toilets. We created the modern refrigerator. When you look at light bulbs, that was really created by a black man named Louis Latimer. They tried to give it to Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was a, a patent office guy. He didn't really create shit. He was infamous for stealing creations, especially from black people. There was a black man who he actually went to court to try to sue, Gainful T. Woods, and Edison lost. Now, if a white man is losing to a black man in the 1800s, that black man is innocent like a motherfucker. <laughs> oh, I gotta get you to talk about that. Uh, that black car company you yeah. was talking about. Yes, the, the, the black car company first. Yeah, yeah, um, before, 
Ford really got it popping, you had um, some brothers in Ohio, and I, forget, I cannot think of their name right now, but it was a black car company, and these brothers made these um, cars by hand, and these were some of the best made cars, and Ford basically beat them out because Ford had a plan where he would <clears throat> mass produce the cars. Plus, Ford was working with our brother George Washington Carver, and George Washington Carver was giving Henry Ford the game. In fact, people try to dismiss George Washington Carver as just somebody who made, made some damn peanut, peanut butter. butter. Right. That's bullshit. Right. He's the father of bioengineering. Nobody was doing bioengineering, meaning getting stuff from the earth and converting that into chemicals that can be used in plants. George Washington Carver was the first person to do that. And he was Henry Ford's right hand man. He was giving Henry Ford all the game. And there was a lot of black people who were giving these corporations the game. It was a sister from North Carolina who created the first maxi pads in America. A lot of folks don't know that. Sanitary napkins as a sister created that. And they stole that idea from her. It was a black man, I think he was from Indiana. He created potato chips. Um, yep. There was another black man who created the modern macaroni and cheese. That was um, Thomas Jefferson's slave, a brother named Hamilton. That was um, Sally, Sally Hemings' brother who created modern mac and cheese. A lot of folks don't know that, man. We've created so much stuff. So I don't, I don't get hey, hey, what's up, everybody? January the 27th. I'm telling you, 8 o'clock, that's my time. Celebrity Theater. I will be in Phoenix in January. Will it be hot yet? Oh, it's going to be nice then. Check this out, man. Make sure you get those tickets and pull up on me. Because at the end of the day, you already know, man. Grab those tickets. Come fuck with me. Celebrity Theater, Phoenix, Arizona. January 27, 8 o'clock. That's enough information, right? You should get the, you get the picture. For the fans of stand-up comedy, you're in luck. Andrew Santino's new comedy special, Cheeseburger, is out now. You might know Andrew from his role on FX, Dave, Netflix, Me Time, or, you know, one of his podcasts, Bad Friends and Whiskey Ginger. He's also in House Party, coming out this week with DC. In Netflix Cheeseburger, Andrew Santino covers topics ranging from how this generation doesn't even try to assassinate presidents to global warming to how women just want to take all of your coins. This is one of the best comedy specials to come out in a very long time. So what are you waiting for? Go to Netflix right now and search Andrew Santino Cheeseburger. That's Andrew Santino Cheeseburger out now on Netflix. And there's no way to prepare you for a prostate exam as a guy. There's not. You may think, I mean, there's some guys out there that go, I know a trick. You're like, well. <laughs> it's different than you think. And for the first time in my life, when I went to get a prostate exam, I kind of understood what it might be like to be a woman to hook up with someone for the first time. I did, I, a little bit, ladies. Like, I got it a little bit. Because I was in this cold, uncomfortable room with no art on the walls. It was very well lit for some reason. I was just in there alone, and then he just pops in real confident and brazen, and he just goes, take your clothes off. And I was like, oh my God. You don't want to chat or nothing? You gonna ever do That's some crazy. just like about the black cowboys? Yeah, we're doing that in this new movie about the Seminoles, the black Seminoles. Um, Pecos Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had a lot of brothers and sisters who were coming from Florida. After the Seminole War, they sent a lot of black people to Oklahoma. That's Indian territory, all right? You had a lot of outlaws out there. You had um, a brother named Bass Reeves. Bass who, Reeves, yeah, bad Badass motherfucker. motherfucker, man. He was living with the Seminoles. They got the Lone Ranger from him because he was a, a black Seminole. He was, he was with the black Seminoles. He was a lawman. He was arresting people. He was very thorough. He had an Indian sidekick. So they were like, yeah, we got to depict him in a show, but we got to make him white, but we'll give him a black mask. All right. So that's another part of the hidden history. They steal a lot of shit from us. Man. Yeah, I read a book called The New Negro by Alan Locke. And mm. it's a, a book about the perspective of black people, the new Negroes. But it's, it was written in 1924, I believe. Mm -hmm. So all of the progressive Negroes that we know now as legendary were young men in this book, giving their perspective to Duke Ellington's, to mm -hmm. all of these different people. Mm -hmm. And to know that, I didn't know, I went to school in North Carolina, and I didn't know that uh, Durham, North Carolina was like the original Black, Black Wall, Wall Street. Street. Absolutely. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm thinking that Black Wall Street was, you know, the, was the Tulsa. Just Tulsa, right. But mm -hmm. it was originally Durham, North Carolina. It was mm -hmm. so, and then a lot of the buildings in Durham, North Carolina are still named after these black people mm -hmm. who were doctors and lawyers and insurance company owners. And, and that's like, what 
do you think is the reason they keep, the real reason they keep that from us in schools? Why because they don't, they, they, they don't want to give us um, that type of knowledge because they don't want to give us any ideas on how to replicate it. Mm -hmm. There were black Wall Streets all over the country. Sure um, in California, we had um, on Los, in Los Angeles, we had Central Avenue. That was the black Wall Street of um, Los Angeles. In Detroit, they had Hastings Street. Um, down in Miami, they had a, um, a, a black Wall Street type of area. But what they would do, they would destroy those areas purposely by building freeways next to them. If you go to any black, any town, any major town, and see where the freeways are, they were, I can almost guarantee it was a black town there, and they used that freeway to undermine that, that area. So they've done all types of little deceptive stuff. They're doing that to Crenshaw Boulevard in LA now. You know, that's a... a what a, they changed the name to, Kit? Which one? Crenshaw? Crenshaw Boulevard. It's still Crenshaw from what I know. Which one they changed the name to? Uh, Marina. I mean, Venice, they call it Silicon Beach. Yeah, Silicon, where, Venice, Venice Boulevard. Oh, Venice, speaking okay, of which, did okay. you hear about the? Sh they had to pay the black family for taking all their yeah, land. Yeah, Bruce's Beach. Shit? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Bruce's Beach. Yeah. How you think they came about? Yeah, man, because people were stumping for it, man. Um, there were some black folks who had um, some prime real estate out there in um, Manhattan Beach. And at the time, there was major segregation, and black people who were well-to-do would go out there and spend money. So the land became very prosperous. They built big businesses. So they came in. The city said, hey, these niggas are having too much fun. We have to stop this. So they did eminent domain. They said, we're just going to take over the land and take Long control of it. City. They did the same thing with Central Park. Central Park used to be a black area yeah. called Seneca yeah. Village. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Seneca Village. Eminent black domain, they mean yeah. just take it. Yeah, just take it. They just say, the, the city needs this. We're going to just take it What's from the black lady name that they took the whole city of Los Angeles. That's Biddy Mason. Biddy Mason, yeah. We, we're doing a lot of stuff on her in our museum. That was a black woman who was a slave, and the Mormons took her out to Los Angeles. People don't understand. California, they had slavery out there in California. They try to make the shit seem like it's liberal. They had slavery out there. They just looked the other way. So she was enslaved out there. Some black folks put her up on game and said, hey, if you come out here, this is technically a free state. You can get your freedom. She ended up getting her freedom and then became the richest woman in California. She built all types of businesses. She owned many of the streets that's in downtown town Los Angeles now so a lot of folks don't know about her I've been trying to get a street named after What's her, her name? Biddy Mason and people act like she don't even exist what is the, the, mm. the it was a young girl that was uh, a young black girl she was very young but it had a whole bunch of oil Sarah Rector Sarah, yeah. that was in Oklahoma okay. yeah, yeah. This, again they a lot of black people were moving to Oklahoma and they would just kind of throw them off on a lot somewhere and they threw this sister and her family on a lot found out that this allotted land had oil under it. So now this little girl, like eight, nine years old, overnight became a millionaire. Multi. So Yeah, multi-millionaire. So the city came in and said, hey, we need somebody to oversee her money. So then they started the finesse game with that. So they always come up with little ways to undermine and finesse us. Yeah, mm -hmm. you was one of the first people I heard talk about the Man Act. Yeah, yeah. The Man Act, that's what they did on R. Kelly. They, they put the Man Act on R. Kelly. The Man Act was something that Jack was cool Johnson. for Jack Johnson. Yeah. Jack Johnson was out here. He was a cold yeah, that was a nigga. Bad was brother. a motherfucker. What happened? Bad brother, Jack, Jack Johnson. Johnson. was walking around with white women, two yeah. white women with his arm around him, and you knew couldn't Kiss nobody him in the back, mouth, nigga. Yeah. Kicked him in the mouth and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Johnson one of the coldest niggas ever. Yes, he like, was. And yeah. beating the dog shit out of people. I'm talking about when niggas still held their guard like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> he could have yeah. knocked these motherfuckers out in 10 seconds, and he would just maul their ass for the whole... 12, 15 round. He ain't got a scratch on but oven mess. Yes, right. indeed. Jack Johnson, man, he would beat these white boxes. And what would happen when he would beat these white boxes, the white people would go out in cities around the country and lynch right. black people yeah, as exactly. revenge. They were so mad at Jack Johnson, they created the King Kong movie about Jack Johnson. A lot of folks don't know that. In 1933, Word. that was about Jack Johnson. This ape going to get the white women because he was out there with the white women. Like, yeah, they really did. With like a top a, hat on. Yeah. And a magic stick, so, man, walk around. Right, right. So the images of Jack Johnson with these white women, they went in Chicago, they created something called the Man Act, which is the White Slave Trafficking Act, to stop him and other black men from getting these white women, because at the time you had a lot of pimps around the country, and white women who were immigrants were coming in, choosing up on these black pimps, so they were losing their minds seeing this. So they said, look, all of that shit is illegal. If you have a white woman, if, if you cross state lines, you go into jail. So that's it. If you're fucking with a white girl, you're, you're trafficking. Yeah. Yep. 
Yep. Tell even me. now. Even now. I, I even tell people. You, you, years you got shit. one white girl, she... They look at all, anytime a black man has sex with a white woman, they look at that as a form of rape. That's why with Bill Cosby. What about the Good Morning America shit? I know you saw that. Yeah, TJ Holmes. And they said, what shit gonna happen now? They They took that nigga off here, but he's running around here, him and that white woman, they were running around like Ghost and Angela from Power and shit. (laughs) I'm like, you sit your ass down. You married, she married, chill out, man. They really fucking? Yeah. 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 I didn't know. I I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I wasn't here. I wasn't here. I wasn't here. Tell me the news. What's going on? They been having great morning. They been laid up all night. You dig? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. That's crazy. Now, I want to get your opinion on something, man, because, you know, you said I'm from D.C. and we've been the victim of gentrification, which most black cities have. But as you said in the history, most of the stuff that we build to end up working, they end up tearing down and, yeah. and Everything. demolishing. Mm-hmm. So is there really a way for black people to, in your opinion, mm-hmm. to actually come up and build another infrastructure for us in any city in America? Yeah, you know, we gotta get on code with each other. See, other right. people are on code against us. See, when it comes to us, we get off code. We get on this minority coalition. We think we gotta bring everybody into our mix and we gotta share what little resources we have. And then other people, when they get their resources, they do not share with us. So we have to have a certain survivalist selfishness Mm -hmm. that we share our resources and keep our resources in house so that we can empower our group. It's Thanks. very important to get on code to do that. And you you were from DC. Um, we know DC was built and designed by a black man, Benjamin Banneker. Yeah, they and tra- <laughs> the black people were free first in DC. Yes, Slaves indeed. were free, what, I don't know how many years it was, but black people were free in D.C. before all the slaves were freed. That's why D.C. was an originally a whole triangle. Mm-hmm. And when they freed the slaves early, Virginia took their piece of land back. That's why D.C. is shaped the way that it is. Mm-hmm. 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 And you know they got the, um, the Washington Monument. That's supposed to symbolize the Ankh of Egypt and Africa. That's how they were designing D.C. based on Masonic um, rituals and they get a lot of the Masonic stuff from ancient Kemetic knowledge and um, Moorish science that the Moors brought into Europe from Africa. So they design a lot of stuff based on old black knowledge that they hide into Masonic orders. It's some real deep, heavy shit. Right. You know, some real heavy shit. That's crazy. Yeah. So when you be on these journeys looking for artifacts, like, what encourage you? What leads you to that direction? Like, okay, like you said, you was going to search for artifacts in yeah. Kennesaw. What yeah. the hell led you to Kennesaw? Because, you know, that's where a lot of the, the real shit is. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Because the, the people in the dominant society, man, they keep a lot of these artifacts and monuments within their family, but they keep it secret. Right. Because they don't want to be outed as racist. They know some of this shit is racist. Um, a lot of times they won't sell it to us. Sometimes we try to get like some of our white friends to go in these stores and buy stuff because if we go in there, they start hiding stuff. I went to another store in uh, Marietta and they had some, some racist memorabilia. They had a couple of things and I tried to buy it and they were like, hey, let me go check on something. They wouldn't hit the shit. They wouldn't even sell it to me. <laughs> yeah, I know, they say, who's that caramel skin fella you got standing outside with you? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna give it to no blacks, are you? <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> yeah, so man, they, they kind of keep that stuff near and dear, man. Right. We got to understand they're very serious about their artifacts. So they want their shit. Yes, they do. They stay in their family. Yes, indeed. Right. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. What's a city with a lot of black history that's little known? Man, we're all over the place, man. There's so many cities out here that that has our history. It's, it's hard to even pinpoint, man, because I go to certain cities and I learn about the black history. I, I remember I went to Buffalo and I found out Buffalo was founded by Buffalo yeah. this weekend. Buffalo was founded by a black dude. Black dude founded Buffalo. We know Chicago was founded by a black guy. A lot of these cities were founded by black people because um, during Western expansion, white people couldn't really go into some of these hostile areas with some of these Native Americans. They would have gotten killed. Yeah, that's so, where the brothers who invented hockey up there way, right? Yeah, in, in Canada. Yeah, 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 they was in Canada. They were, they they were right there. Yeah, yeah, they were in Canada. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Brothers invented hockey up there in Canada. Um, also, black men, the Buffalo Soldiers, they became the first park rangers in the, the country. The, mm-hmm. the people taking care of the parks and all of that. Man. Yeah, they're, they're the first park rangers were the Buffalo Soldiers. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
I'm, our history is everywhere, dude. Everywhere. Yeah. Bro, I was on here one day and I told them where the name the Cowboys came from, and mm. they thought I was lying until they went and looked shit up. Mm. Mm. Had the whole internet tripping. I, I know some what shit, cowboy too. Cowboy came from? Because they wouldn't call them men. Yeah. Yeah, they called them boy. Also, Louisiana, man, um, speaking of sports, um, New Orleans Saints. You know their logo? The What's that? The Fleur de Lis? What do they call that? that I logo? don't know the name of it. are my Louisiana that. people? What's that called? It's the Fleur de Lis? That's the name of it? That was uh, the French, you know, they were the slave owners down there in Louisiana. That was a French symbol that they would brand on black people who ran away. God dang. A lot of folks don't know that. Yeah, they would brand that shit on black people's <laughs> faces. People would be like, man, hell no, man. That ain't, that ain't our symbol, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. black. Yeah, they would brand them with that. So like, uh, our history is everywhere, man, all over. We were, we were speaking earlier when you got here about yeah. reparations, right? Yeah. And, and I want to get your opinion on what you feel like the best mm-hmm. distribution <laughs> method of mm-hmm. reparations should mm-hmm. be. Yeah. Because I personally <laughs> Carlos feel, said we shouldn't get shit. Huh? Carl, I mean, like, Chico, Chico said we shouldn't get shit. I didn't shit. say we shouldn't get shit. Mm-hmm. I said we shouldn't get cash. But if what? we ain't getting cash, cash, we ain't getting shit. No, I'm saying that. You they see what he did doing for $1,500? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. know. Hey, January 28th at 7 o'clock this time, J.O.N. We're going to San Diego. We'll be at the Balboa Theater, the Rocky Balboa. That's what I'm calling it. Make sure you grab those tickets and come check it out. At the end of the day, man, the tour coming to your city. Don't worry about nothing. All right, Chico Bean here. January 13th, 2023. This one excited, man. MGM, Detroit. What up, though? Detroit, I will be able to tell you already know, nigga. We got dog shit on the floor. It's going down January 13th. MGM, Detroit. It's going down. Make sure you get your tickets, man. Detroit, you know I love y'all, man. You know it's like a second home to me, so make sure you get your tickets, Detroit. Yeah, it's going down. Have you ever gave a nigga some money? <laughs> Give it to us. Have you ever gave a nigga some yes. money? What did nigga do with the we money? Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got the fuck on. Hey, you, you never, never see. I ain't have to see that nigga get into that little paper in there. Until he needed some more money. Uh, I know. And that's another Louis and Gucci. Nah, man. We should, should get cash. We should get cash. We should get cash. Because we, we've cash. had this argument. We should black get 20% are, cash. Yeah, black folks are just fucked up with money. Look, look. That's some rumor. Some of the Native Americans, they get that money and they get drunk and people don't question the shit. They, some of them drank their money off, some of them put it in casinos. We're the only group that are told we gotta do something specific with, with we our money. We gotta start a we foundation. Gotta, yeah, fuck no, 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 that. fuck that. Give black folks Long their money. Long as we spend the money with other black folks, we good. Yeah. Well, that's but the that's the problem. When has that we ever been done? Yeah. Yeah. This, this, my, no this, my, my, this is my idea on it. Even if we fuck it up, so what? We gonna it's ours to fuck with. Right. No. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's Niggas gonna get to that money and gonna be like, fuck your shoes, You know how nigga. you can solve this problem? <laughs> I ain't Don't buying your shoes. What the hell you think you is? Right. Being the majority <laughs> of people who he didn't. It's gonna yeah. be some fuck niggas that. like me that's he fucking it. That. My whole goal is gonna be see, to see how fast I can spend this <laughs> shit before they change the money. No. <laughs> I gotta get everything I want before the inflation hit. <laughs> that's gonna hit we the next day. We got 24 hours. I that's what I'm saying. Shit. That's you got. That's what I'm saying. It's no. only gonna be a day. Because as soon as they give the niggas the money, so the next day, the fuck? a gallon of milk is gonna be three hundred thousand dollars. Well, we gotta spend the money the same day. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. We gotta get our milk now. Hell no, nah, don't listen so, to those, man. Okay, so figure ten year speaking. plan, look, motherfucker. Because in California, we're, we're stomping heavy for reparations in California. We've been on right. task force. I've been seeing so, it. Too. Yeah, I saw two hundred thirty-three thousand. Yeah, they're talking about giving black people in California two hundred thirty-three thousand. Okay, so. A house with in California your, costs a million dollars for a house this size. Yeah, I know yeah. A, a microwave. Yeah. That ain't, you, see, it ain't even enough that. to fuck up. That's you my have point. A significant amount of knowledge. Mm-hmm. Like you, it, it's it's clear. It's evident. We've been talking about it. Yeah. So, if black people were given money, as you mm-hmm. say, we should. Mm-hmm. What would be the plan that you would draw out if you could draw it out with all the things that you know in the history and the way that you've seen the things of God? What would you say we should do with the money when we got it? You can do anything you want with it. Look, if That's you get 10 I'm black saying. people, five of them going to fuck the money off, and the other five, they're going to start businesses, and they're going to do some prospect- prosperous with that money. Yeah. I promise you that. Three man. of them yes. going to fuck it off. So, yeah. We, but how, do we, it, how, do, That's how do we keep the five that fuck it off right. from coming to fuck us up? Because we didn't. Well, how about that? We ain't say fuck the money off. Well, if y'all going to fuck the money up, just spend it on black people when you fuck the money up. Y'all go to white business and fuck the money up. You get them back rich. You get them back the money. Hey, See, look, we can't get it. one reparations, though. It's got to be two rounds. 
See, that man, you want more money. Yeah. See, no, that's why I'm you fucked it up because you want no, another round. <laughs> he, he tried to fuck the money up so he can get another round. See, we no, need more rounds. What I'm saying is, if you <laughs> never had the ball. shit, yeah, the I'm first time ball. you get the shit, you're going to fuck it up. Well, you don't, you ain't gonna really understand what this money no, is until you get that's this. just like the first time you meet the plug. You ain't got time to fuck it up. You didn't act like you done sold some dope before. If you ain't, nigga, I, you better lie. Hey man, hey, all I'm just saying I got, is, I got, I got people that gonna buy. He niggas like, you put up all niggas, this fight to I'm get sure. this little reparation <laughs> money. It, it should be up to that black family what they do what with this. Exactly. But they financial should. literacy is a must. Yeah, we can do that too. See, all but this we is got just conversation. Financial, financial literacy is a must. That's Economics right. has to be taught right. in the household. Yeah, absolutely. You can't I just do. fuck the money up. I don't give a fuck, black brother. You can't just fuck that money up. As a nigga who black brother. broke before. <laughs> I refuse to watch you. Give me the money. If you want to fuck it up, I invest your money. Now, now DC, if, if you got a check for $230,000, right. what would you do with the money? I wouldn't tell nobody. There you go. <laughs> See? Everybody got one. That's, that's everybody, everybody, got everybody, got everybody got it. Everybody, that, everybody, that, everybody ain't get qualified. Yeah, right, right. That's the only foundation. Some like niggas wake up and go down there and sign their name up. Yeah, but right, it's free right. money. Yeah. Ooh, niggas some niggas don't gonna find out the day the niggas don't. Yeah. Yeah. When they get the check and they're gonna be like, wait a minute. <laughs> but uh-uh, come on, bring that little money back. You ain't no nigga. nigga. I'm yeah. just yeah. letting you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 You 60% yeah. European, my nigga. If I was in the street, I'm just letting you know. This is me in 2000, say before they gave it to me in 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the 10th grade. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Legion with 230,000. First of all, I'm dropping out of school. <laughs> you're gonna just fuck it up all I'm out right. this bitch. I'm gonna give me a cough credit list. I'm gonna spend my seven racks, give me a nice ass crown vic. <laughs> you hear me? I'm gonna go to the dope man and say, listen, I know I will buy three five. <laughs> I want five pounds. You're just gonna said, trap it all. I'm trapping, cause this is what, what I know. But well, so, I invested, this is what I know. I ain't gonna fuck it up. I just terrible, elevated dog. my yeah. lifestyle. Terrible. I think that I, my personal opinion mm -hmm. Is I think that the power that, is in the choice. Mm. I think if they gonna give us reparations, I think that each black person should have a choice in how they receive their reparations. I think you should be able to say, "Nah, I would I, fuck that money, nigga. Give me Nebraska. I take, <laughs> give me three quarters of Nebraska. That's all I want. You know what I'm taking? You want Nebraska? I want to be tax free. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Just like make me tax American. free. There you go. That That's it. That, that ain't possible. Shit. Yeah. That no, ain't possible. Yes, it Chico, is. Chico, no, it if you got it, Man, if you got it, yes, it is. What, what's depends. stopping you from just buying the land with the 200K? You said what now? What would stop you from just buying the land with the 200K? You could because buy it. it. I feel like if you have had 200K, yeah. then you would buy the land. But if I'm a nigga that ain't never had $2,000 mm -hmm. and I wake up with 200K, Fuck some land, nigga. I'm great go get a chain, nigga. I'm great go get a chain, nigga, with my face on that making diamonds, nigga. And I'm gonna be like this on Instagram on you bitches. You niggas ain't got this chain, nigga. 140,000, nigga. Don't, don't. Diamonds. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Let niggas spend their money. Now y'all talking about spending the money. See? No, I'm saying no, if I I, I'm talking about figuratively. If I'm a, if I'm, I'm talking about. I became the blueprint. We, we took the, we <laughs> had to create a blueprint. You the same way. Mm -hmm. As black men, we don't have a blueprint usually that's laid down for us. We have to create our own. Mm -hmm. So when you are the black man that's creating a blueprint and you actually, uh, you know, acquire shit and, and, and go through money and figure out money, then you realize, okay, $233,000 is a lot of money, but it's not. It's, it's not. But it's it all if you try to use, it. do some life changing yeah, exactly. shit, it's so, not. But, but, so, we got, but we have to stop. Life. But we have to stop using the common dusty denominator when it comes to shit like that. We just find out what the dusty niggas are gonna do right. and be like, damn, we shouldn't but do it because of the dusty niggas. They don't fuck the money everywhere. Let them fuck it up. They gonna fuck it up. They use the dusty niggas. They use the dusty niggas at the narrative. I know this. Dusty niggas is the spoke for That's the spoke for the knows. I look at the progressive black folks and I wonder what they're gonna do with it because that's gonna have more of an impact. I already know the Dusty niggas are gonna Perfect fuck it off. Perfect way it is. Dion. Dion Sanders is a progressive nigga. Yes. yes he you did. see what he did. Yes, he and did. you see how niggas is talking about him. Come on, man. Now, I agree with Dion bouncing. Right. I'm, I'm on that side of the fence. Oh, what? Just, I, why, on, why, why, why? Because, see, at first, see. look, I'm, I was like, look. You want to stay with the HBCU, keep making that hot, keep building that up, right. keep giving shine to the HBCUs. But the thing is, man, they didn't pay my brother the way they needed to pay Fact. him. 
We have to pay our folks, man. When and you come HBCUs in there, said is, that. is owned by white people. Yeah, yeah, they ain't yeah. named after white people. Yeah, yeah. Well, they um, just one of the first like schools. Spelman, Spelman University is named after Laura Spellman. That's Rockefeller's wife. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of folks don't know that this shit. This nigga just come and fuck all your black history programs. No, I know. No, they <laughs> saw it. It's just the criteria that they told y'all that this is the history. We, nigga, that's white people history. Hand me yeah. some hand sanitizer. That ain't our history. But with Dion, man, they weren't paying that brother. He right. was using his own salary to donate to the, some of the school programs. Come on, man. He was bringing in his own sponsors. The the HBCUs, they should have been working their pieces, bringing in more money for that brother. And resources. They, they should have been, yeah. I mean, two championships. The school could have been out here politicking um, endorsements, merchandising deals. And on top of that, Dion was getting robbed at the school. People were stealing shit from him. Y'all know that? Yeah. Yeah, somebody stole his chain <laughs> in the locker room. And I'm trying to hey, you want to give niggas some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga stole Dion's chain. Yeah. You want niggas to get $233,000. <laughs> <laughs> at the game. 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 Yeah. At the game. And then, like, I think people don't rewind the tape. When he first took the job, people was mad at him for taking it. Yeah. They were, I remember people mm-hmm. talking shit about him for taking the job. Mm-hmm. And then when he leave the job, it's like, you ain't shit. It's right. like, People so I crazy, they thought HBCU. he was going to go there and spend all his own money. money right. shit I'm a Come graduate on, of an HBCU. And the, in my opinion, the biggest asset of being in an HBCU is pride. Mm-hmm. It's the pride that we have in the school. Mm-hmm. If you go to any HBCU, all that shit is the same everywhere. Go ask any A. Is the freshman dorms fucked up? Woo! Is the financial aid department fucked up? Woo! Mm-hmm. He eat chicken on Wednesdays in the cab. Woo! Mm-hmm. So it's the same everywhere. Right. It's just the pride that we have in the schools and that make it special to us. That. Yeah. So when somebody comes in and like Dion did and changes the culture to where when somebody comes to this. HBCU and see these facilities, he can't pack them up and take them right. to Colorado with right. him. Right. Like, right. them is still there. Mm-hmm. So if I wouldn't give a fuck how long Emmett Smith decided to coach at Winston-Salem State, nigga, get the fuck on, but leave that goddamn gym because I'm going to work out. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we got to have that perspective because we be mad and, and, and I think that... But this the thing, too. He can't change it by himself. Right. right. It right. need to be right. three more motherfuckers. Fuck it, yeah. I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. somebody else, yeah. it's somebody else's yeah. turn. And this man 50-something right? years old. Yeah. He's not trying to spend the rest of his life building some shit. And he is the coach. And he made he all this progress with no world. resource. Yeah. Think of what he gonna do when he got some resources. Come on, Think man. of how many niggas gonna get to go to Colorado that never been to Colorado before. Come on, Joe. And yeah. play football and get a, a respected he took, degree. He took six on one. A respected wow. degree. Mm. Oh, you, you did well in Colorado. Colorado. Oh, well, shit. They about to see some shit that they ain't never seen before. Right. It's about to be some niggas get some jobs. Right. It's right. about get to be some new uh, send the the on and all yeah. that type of that shit. Mm-hmm. They got to yeah. change all this shit. This is why you can't get 233000 <laughs> <laughs> The white people watch what he did. Now, that's what I'm saying. The white people that watch what he did in Jackson State, shit, come change some of this shit. We tired of eating up. That dry ass chicken, too. Say something about, hey, man. Man, we got some shit. We got resources. Mm-hmm. If you did that with nothing, mm-hmm. man, we got everything. Did that from the ground. Do what you do. Yep. Yes, you and did. And you also, all the people that's complaining, what have you done for nothing? They ain't been in no game. Mm-hmm. They ain't even know they had what, a band. What did you do? <laughs> what have you done? They ain't even know they band was good. I know. I what have you done at your alma mater? Like, Listen, this man. Now, back and now we fall, the responsibility fall back on the same people who criticize them. These right. the same people. Now we got to, as a community, we all got to go to these games and support all of these programs. Right. It can't just be Jackson State. Right. Right. Like, it got to yeah. be everybody. Us as consumers, we have to spend our money with right. these programs. We're not right. unified. Like we have yeah. to yeah. demand that these games be on. Right. We have mm-hmm. to do that. Now, we that's the part that's the, that's going to be left out. Right. That's the real uproar. Because now motherfuckers know, oh, now we got to do something. Right. But you know what? Mm-hmm. We hate to see a nigga be successful and then we be like, well, shit, nigga, we don't want who made you successful, nigga? No. You need to get some of that back. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I thought the whole goal. Like, God, damn. <laughs> I thought the whole goal was progress. You did eight shows. Yeah. You need to do two, yeah. three. I know. 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 I
The boy yeah. did. The, so, man, the OG so went that, crazy down there. That's now. what I'm yeah. saying. So when they come with the Arizona deal, he don't supposed to take that. Right. Or the Brigham Young, or the whoever the fuck the school is. Hundred million. The, Duke, the, Duke, or the, some, the University yeah. of North Carolina. When the Florida State right. finally say, okay, now we're ready for you to come home. And we know you want to go to Florida. Right. Come on. Right. Now they need to come with the forty right. piece. And and I mean, you acting like this ain't one of the greatest. Athletes of yeah. all yeah. like, yeah. This yeah. nigga has He's already done the yeah. greatest, some of the greatest shit ever. Mm. You mad because a nigga left the HBCU? But do what I'm saying. He mm. is the culture. Mm. He came down there, shed light on something that mm. ain't never had light right. shed on it before. Made a made a statement. Mm. Then he said, you know what? It's time to go make a statement somewhere else. Then mm. y'all say, hold up, you ain't done. Y'all don't know his mission. Yeah. Mm. You can't tell another nigga what's his mission. And it was always bigger than that. I thought that's the whole shit, is the progress. And it, Come on. The, the main thing people have been saying, when he said he was going to speak, and he was talking all this black culture and black boys and all that, it's like, and y'all showed him what the real black culture is like. Mm, right. Criticize, mm. criticize, right. motherfucking right. criticize. Right. And all the and good he brought. And underpaid him, and underpaid him. All the good he brought. And, that, and that's another question I have for you, because, like, the woke community. Mm -hmm. Like, this is something I don't understand about the woke community. They ain't woke, they just on coffee. They supposed, to, they supposed to be the, the, the upper echelon of, of, you know, scholarly black men that is, you know, I, I know all of this information, but then these niggas be on live arguing like rappers. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, like, yeah. what, if, what the, if this is the, the best of us, and then you look on there and you see niggas <laughs> making wrestling videos. I'm the greatest of all time. Nice. Ain't nobody read more books than me, nigga. I know more than every nigga. Like, what are you supposed to like, bro? <laughs> hey, what's up, world? Friday, February 17th. We back in at 8 o'clock. North Charleston Performing Arts Center in North Charleston, South Carolina. That's where I'm going to be at. Because big city women take their bra off every day at the same time. 527. 545, it don't matter what he had in the world, that bitch coming off. Sit in traffic, ah, oh, shit! <laughs> Pull that bitch out the sleeve. <laughs> then the first thing they gonna do is scratch under that titty. <laughs> Ooh, shit! You know why they do that? Cause big titties itch on the bottom. <laughs> Little titties itch on the top. So uh, everybody in Chuck Town. Go ahead and grab those tickets and come pull up on me at 8 o'clock, man. If y'all still pulling up around 8 o'clock, we'll wait a little bit. But, you know, it's black people time, so don't even worry about it. I know how y'all get down in South Carolina. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex T. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing vlogs. Mm -hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all. So if one episode a week is not enough, y'all about to get some more content on Patreon. Yes, y'all be saying, oh, make the episodes longer. I need twice a week well this is your opportunity to see us twice a week and also you kind of get you're gonna get a look into our lives mm -hmm. and know us on a personal level mm -hmm. so make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash poor mind sign up today there's different tiers so if you want audio only you can just listen if you want video and audio we have that too and also we have a top top tier where you get exclusive access to merch shows all that good mm -hmm. stuff so go to patreon.com backslash poor minds and sign up today Period. Bam, <laughs> niggas don't know who invented French toast. <laughs> I tell you one thing, they weren't fucking French. See, all of us are supposed to be technically woke. Right. You dig? The people that are designated the woke people, who are really a lot of the vocal niggas on YouTube, right. a lot of these are like ex-convict niggas who would argue to, to waste time in jail. Right. So they come out of jail and have the same damn shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what niggas would do in jail. We niggas didn't know, argue to waste time in jail. jail. <laughs> they in fucking jail, man. I, we call that prison babble. That's all that shit is. That's and, and, and the niggas ain't as deep as you think they are, man. They make every you little thing sound. Listen, Red Bull, jail. brother. First of all, red, okay? That's the red blood of the black man. The bull, the black bull, that comes from the um, Afrocentric brothers and sisters who fought in slavery. You put the red bull together, what you got? Crackers. Wait. 
Now see, I don't mean to interrupt you, my brother, but if you look at the Red Bull, it's, it's deeper than that. See, the red represents the skin of the Indian people, and the bull is the shit of the white man. See, what did the red man eat? That's a buffalo. <laughs> but see what you're forgetting, my brother. Hang brother. me the can. Hang me the can, my brother. <laughs> see, you said Red Bull. What does Red Bull give you? Wings. So, so what brother. do they give the black man? Chicken wings. Oh, see, that is all we are given. We are given the 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 rareness and the 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 the, the, the you, uh, you, you don't see because you know you're not what? looking. I'm looking because when I look at the bull, I see red and I see the bull. But there are two bulls. They're fighting head to head. That means we're going to war forever. That's what you. <laughs> My brother. Now see, Red Bull is a German company. But we in America drinking German energy. Now the same people that own Volkswagen, hear me out, are the same people that put that shit in them Skittles. <laughs> Skittles, my brother. Did you go to the Skittles debate? Right to the Skittles. Did you know that all Skittles are really the same flavor? They just color them differently? Okay, now let's go even deeper than that. Everybody knows who knows anything that Chef Boyardee was a black man. <laughs> Chef Boyardee was the great grandfather of Run DMC. That's what you didn't know. Now see, you start taking it back. Now see, you don't even you didn't even realize uh -huh. that they have completely taken Uncle Ben out of the grocery stores and my aunt Jemima. <laughs> now see what they're trying to do is break, break up the black family. They taking our auntie. <laughs> they taking our uncle. Mm -hmm. What's next? Our sales are already expensive as fuck. Big Meanwhile, on. the Quaker Oats man has uh. been allowed to be a white face uh. on oatmeal for over hundreds of years. <laughs> At an affordable price point. <laughs> Look at Chris. <laughs> what about the Chris, my brother? Speak on it, my brother. <laughs> Nobody's gonna talk about how Count Chocolate was a convicted felon. <laughs> Tricks are for kids, he's a pedophile. How did you know that, my brother? Tricks are for kids. Adults eat. See, if you eat Apple kids. Jacks, you would know that that's a racist term, and they are laughing at the violence in the black community. Mm. Now, see, in the in the early 90s, carjackings were right. prevalent. <laughs> See, now, corn pop. now who makes your iPhone? Corn Apple. <laughs> See, what are you doing? Jackie. Corn was created by a black man. It was cultivated by a black man named Pops. I know. So corn pops I know is a going. play on the corn that pops cultivated that we all eat today. Kellogg's mm -hmm. was racist. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They boxed mm -hmm. was white for 75 years. <laughs> Hidden colors is not actually about color at all. It's yeah. not. What it's about? It's about being hidden in a crayon box <laughs> like the black crayon is always hidden. It's not available for you to find when you open the box. You have to move other white and red and blue and orange crayons around to find the black one. That's what Hidden Colors is about. This brother doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not here to argue with you. Not here to argue with you, but I'm... <laughs> That's not how it be sounding, man. That's prison babble. That's all this shit is, man. I just want to argue just, just in argue jail. for the sake of arguing, dude, to, to waste the time, to spend the time, man. That's so, all it is. So do you, are you able to... Are you able to de decipher that because you've been doing it for so long? Are you able to look and say, I ah, know? Nope, yes, yeah, of course. Have yeah, you ever been fooled? Mm. Kind of, sort of. Sometimes, sometimes it, I interview people for some of the films, and then I found out that they were prison babblers, and they ended up on the editing prison room babblers. floor. You know, the shit didn't even get in the film. Okay. You know, so well, we've had a couple of um, false flags, but for the most part, man, I kind of study people and see if they know what they're talking about. They can tell what they need to say without the babbling, yeah. because a lot of times when motherfuckers just babbling on and on and on, that's a filler for them not knowing the fuck they're talking about. Mm. People who know real knowledge, they get right to the point. Yeah. What backlash have you caught from the black community, you know, about, you know, the films that you make and, and the stances that you take on a lot of things? You know, the only black folks who kind of have a problem are black people who are trying to get in good with white society. You know, a, a lot of them who are trying to um, not rock the boat, because right. I've had a couple of black folks 
to when we first started doing Hidden Colors, they were like, this is going to be so offensive to white people. Why are you just being so mean to the white people? Why? And it's that type of mentality. <laughs> and so we like, you know, you know, we're just telling the, the truth. truth. We're telling the truth. Yeah. The truth is the truth. You do catch a lot of backlash and shit like that. They try to paint you as this radical extreme. Oh, yeah, they do. The they truth do, hurts. Yeah, that, that's going to happen. You know, that happens with any black person who's speaking prominently about issues. Because a lot of, man, we got to understand this. There's a lot of black folks who didn't want to get off the plantation and don't want to get off the plantation now. Mm -hmm. Even during slavery, man, you had a couple of types of black folks, the ones who would get the hell on up out of there and the ones who were perfectly fine with what was happening on those plantations because that's all they knew. Right. You understand? So when we start telling black people we need to start working and building our own, that's a lot of hard work. Huh. It's easier just to sit up here and, hey, I go work for this white man. I got it made. I ain't got to come up with all of the bills and the zoning. I go in and put in my eight hours every day, get my drink on on the weekend. What the fuck I want to rock that boat for? Right. To be an entrepreneur, like you guys got this shit popping here. This is popping. This takes motherfuckers getting up, putting in some work. My man Chico was helping them put some of the shit together. You understand? That's real work. Right. When you have your own shit, you have to get up and do that every day. You don't get just eight hours. We're here in the middle of the fucking night. Y'all got me out here like a damn vampire. I don't know what time it is right now. Oh, vampire! You come vampire. Brother. If you want to speak on the vampire, let's talk about Dracula being a black man. Speak on it, brother. Now, it, see, Chris. Ain't nothing but niggas drowning in milk. Now, see, vampires originated <laughs> in Africa. That's what I wanted to say. From the Vampirian tribe. <laughs> Now, all of these brothers were over six feet tall mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and had hands as big as baby gorillas. Mm -hmm. There are uh -huh. no known photographs of baby gorillas. <laughs> I don't see some baby pictures. I don't see some baby pictures. Now, now the, the, something that's always been hilarious to me that you do the coon train. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Look yeah. at the coons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a broken tail like, then here come the coons. Like, yeah, yeah. What, what, what gives you the, the fearlessness to go with a lot of the, the, the black power structure in reality, man? Yeah, because you know what? The black, a lot of those guys would actually go in on me. When I started doing the Hidden Color series, man, the white power structure would send their Negro minions after me to kind of try to discredit mm -hmm. me. You understand? And that's what they usually do. A lot of these Negroes you see on these news shows on television, these are Negroes that's been vetted, and their job is to kind of be a buffer between the grassroots and the white power structure. So they're always wagging their finger to us, kind of telling the black masses what to do and not to do. So we said, hey, you guys are not giving us any advice that's going to be pertinent to us. So we started calling them out and putting them on the coon train. We actually had a coon train of Ward in LA a few years ago. We were giving out trophies to niggas. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did yeah. anybody come to accept this? Let me no, ask you your who got their award. I, I gave Jesse Lee Peterson his award personally. Ah, now you know amazing. Jesse. Yeah, Jesse. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I Jesse. don't like it. Thank you. Jesse niggas. is, he's a for real coon. That boy, Jesse's crazy. been to my house before. For real? Yeah, because I, I filmed him for one of my movies and we're, this is off camera, and Jess was like, Tyreek, you got a real nice house. I said, well, thank you, Jesse. If black folks work harder and not be so lazy, they can have nice stuff like you. I was like, damn, this nigga's a real coon. Yeah, yeah. damn. What we were filming this nigga, he was just coon. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just coon to rest. Just coon shit off the Came top. out of nowhere. Yeah, I'm like, all right, Jesse. So yeah, he's a, people think that that's an act. No, that nigga's really coonish like that. He yeah. fucked up. Yeah, now, he's funny you your opinion. Who are some of the black people that you think can make some shit happen? Man, you know who? The everyday average black person is going to make stuff happen. See, we, we don't have to depend on certain prominent black people. It's going to always start from the grassroots, man. Mm -hmm. Always from the grassroots. Because a lot of people that's a little too prominent, a lot of them have been compromised. So you have certain people within the community who are activists who can kind of coach people and give them the game. But it's always going to start with the person on the grassroots. Even Tupac said that. He said, look, either I'm going to change the world or I'm going to spark the brain of somebody who's going to change the world. Yeah. Yeah. Very right. And we got a deep history, man. We, and, and again, we talk about our history all over the world, all over this country. Right. Everywhere we go, man, we, our imprint is there. We're here in, in Georgia. There's so much stuff in Georgia. You, you asked me earlier what shocked me. One thing that did shock me is that a lot of black towns that we did have control over, they were flooded deliberately by the white supremacists. Lake were, Lanier. Lake Lanier. It mm -hmm. used to be Os Oscarville. 
Mm -hmm. There used to be a town called Oscarville, black people. They killed many of the black people, ran them out, and then flooded that area. And we have to understand, water, so yeah, water has spirits, all right? The molecular structure of water has spirits. It can carry spirits. That's why when you give libations to somebody when they die, you pour out liquor. You pour out liquid. You pour libations. Water carries spirits. You have Lake Lanier on top of those dead black bodies. Lake Lanier has had some of the most freakish accidents over the years that's damn near unexplained. People then say people disappeared. They 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 all the time. For, just, people said when you go into Lake Lanier, sometimes it feels like somebody's pulling you down. Several people have said this about Lake Lanier. There's been people driving by Lake Lanier and something pushes their car in the damn water several times. There's all types of vehicles under Lake Lanier. That's the ancestral energy mm. and the spirits, man. And we're close to the Gullah, you know, Georgia's right next to South Carolina, so that Gullah Geechee thing. Yeah. You ever heard of the Mississippi Peach Bowl? That sounds familiar. Wait, are you talking about the, the Devil's Punch Bowl? Yeah. That's what you're talking about, where mm. they killed a lot of black people in Mississippi um, after the Civil Wars. The Union soldiers did that. They got a lot of black people, put them in a Natchez, Mississippi. I think that's the name of the place. Natchez. Natchez, Mississippi, yeah. They put them over there, starved them out, and basically created a genocide over there that's never talked about. And it was the Union soldiers who did that. Yeah, I yeah. just saw the, the clip where it said the, some African soldiers, like 78 African soldiers were shot when they asked for they, they, their uh, wage in the Civil War, one of the wars or something like that. They were all killed just for asking for their pay. Yeah, a, a few. There was a lot of different massacres that, that occurred with black people. And the Civil War would not have been won if it weren't for black people fighting in the Facts. Civil War. Facts. But a lot of people don't know that. They're, the North was losing the Civil War because all of the military schools are in the South. All right, the, the South was beating the shit out of the North. They started recruiting black people out of the swamps and black people on the plantations to fight for the Union. That's when they started winning. Even Abraham Lincoln said, if it weren't for these Negroes, we would have lost this shit. Damn. Hey man, Saturday, February 18th at eight o'clock, we will be at the Johnny Mercer Theater in Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, big Johnny Mercer Theater. I feel like you gotta say that. Later with the eye patch, go over there and see if them niggas gangsta. <laughs> I believe you the toughest bitch in here. I just, I just feel like you can have any bitch selling pussy in two weeks. <laughs> What's your name? Pearly? Aloysius? Yeah, that bitch done sold some pussy before. She the type of person, fuck people, bitches, dudes, whoever. Just Aloysius. Woo! She got a strap on with some real foreskin on it. Grab those tickets, pull up on me. You already know how we do, man. Savannah, what y'all waiting on? Grab the tickets. We're trying to sell out right now. So by the time you see this, the tickets need to be halfway gone. Get yours. Go get them. I'm waiting on you. Here we go. February 3rd through the 5th, 2023, Summit City Comedy Club in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This shit far as a fucking way, but I'm still doing them. February 24th through the 26th, I'll be at the Improv in Dania, Florida. Where the fuck is that? I don't know, but I'll be there. March 4th, Variety Playhouse in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh shit, I got some Atlanta shows, nigga. We in here, the squad coming out for that one. Two shows at the Variety Playhouse. That sound like a strip club. They got me working at the strip club? <laughs> fuck it, I'ma do it. All right, there we go. All right, last, April 8th. 2023, I will be at the Mirage in Las Vegas. I'm back at the Mirage, man. Sold that bitch out the last time y'all came out. We gonna do it again, the Mirage. I had a suit on and all that, and my shit still was like this. And, and they were sending, like and they was sending out first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were sending us out well, first. Was it one for my nigga? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the, hey, on the telegram talking big shit. Don't make me send these niggas down there. <laughs> <laughs> I might as well go and give up custard. <laughs> 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 you gonna give up custard? <laughs> yes, indeed. Is there anything that you haven't done that you want to do? Man, um, I'm doing it now, man, with the museum thing. That was something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, so I'm getting that popping now. So I'm in a good zone, man. I'm, I'm doing all the shit that I want to do, man. And that's what Anything we want to do, we can just get up and do it. Nothing is stopping us. Nothing well, is yeah. stopping us from doing shit. If I want to um, shit, run for office, I would go out there and do it and probably win. Now, they'd shoot my ass the next day, but I would go out there and do it if I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we ain't gonna let them, we gonna let them get right. you like Nigga, that. Nigga, if Herschel is winning, Herschel is actually winning right now, and this nigga can't even talk. This dude, if he's got it popping, anybody. This is gonna come out after the election. Hey, if that nigga win, man, you niggas. <laughs> 
It ain't gonna be on. Uh-uh. It ain't gonna be on us. Mm-hmm. You know who? It, it ain't. A, hey, it'll be on them. Mm-hmm. It that ain't enough they of us. That's what they say. No word. It ain't yeah. enough of us to make a vote difference. Right. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe it, it, we need to find out on this one. Yeah. If there's anyone to find out, it's this one. I'm you, <laughs> if there's I'm anyone you, to find you. out if black people can make a difference, it's Herschel, nigga. The, the, the world shit that scares me the most is I know that even as terrible as Herschel is, he ain't even the worst motherfucker that they trying to sneak off in there. Mm-hmm. They want you to see Herschel. They show you every goddamn stupid shit Herschel say. But it's a it's a white person that they trying to sneak in that's dumber than Herschel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell them all the shit. Hey, you say hey, that, nigga. Herschel, say that shit. That nigga, go, go. He said some of the funniest and realest shit ever. He said, nigga, Herschel Walker played football when the helmets were soft. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, that nigga played smooth as a motherfucker. <laughs> Boy, play head to head. <laughs> Clinton, that nigga got a smooth ass brain, bro. It shit, shit look like a liver up there. <laughs> Hey man, that's crazy, this is, man. It's a legend. It's honor, man. Yes, like, it's real to have you. Yeah, this, I hope man. this ain't the last Please. time you no, stop man. doing For that. Sure. Man. Anytime, man. You got. It. All right, question. Uh, right now, uh, in in Haiti and Dominican Republic, there's a lot of discrepancies. Patients are getting deported. Yeah. Women can't even give birth inside of Dominican hospitals. They're literally giving birth outside of Dominican hospitals because they are mistreating patients and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What do you think the cause is for Dominicans not wanting to? You know, integrate. Like, like they're black too. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, yeah. What, why do you think that they mm-hmm. they act the way they do? Yeah, they they've been like that ever since Desaline and those guys took over the whole island. Remember, it was the Dominicans who wanted to get the Haitians off their back. They wanted independence from the Haitians after the Haitians got the Spanish off their backs because many of the Dominicans and many people in Latin America they identify with the Spanish as their brethren. You understand? So if you go to any South American or Latin American country, they identify as white and they be black as us, especially in Puerto Rico. And they had something in um, the 1930s and 40s where Trujillo, over there in the Dominican Republic, they had the Haitian massacre where they were slaughtering Haitians in the Dominican Republic. So they were looking at dark Dominicans and they were having them say the word parsley. They call it the parsley massacre. So if they said the word parsley with an accent, they said, oh, this nigga's Haitian, let's kill him. So that scared a lot of people and they got people on some shit where I don't, I know black, I'm no black, I'm, you know, I'm Spanish, I'm Spanish. So that's why that hatred is there. It's a real heavy thing. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Oh, I, I hate fucking the mood up. No, but I feel like, why is it like that? It's so deep, man. I know some of this shit is real it's deep. Just, it's just that they don't want to be no part of the Haitian, because they don't want to be black. They yeah, don't want they don't to identify as black. They don't want to identify as black. And, um, you know, that's interesting, man. A lot of dark-skinned people of color, we don't understand that they, a lot of times, don't identify as black. There's a lot of people from East Africa who come here jet black. They are technically classified as Caucasian. They play a lot of these racial games, man. So we are looking at somebody who we how, think is black. How the hell they, 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 they Dude, I'm telling you because of the, they say that technically a Caucasian person is somebody who's from the Middle East, Europe, and North Africa. Technically, legally, that's what a Caucasian is. Legally? Yeah. So certain people from the Horn of Africa, North Africa, all of the, the Moroccans, Libyans, all of these people, they are all classified as white. Um, South America, many of them in Central America and uh, the Caribbean, many of them are classified as white. We don't even know that, but they look like us and they become people of color when they want to kind of get some benefits, but they identify as white. Legally. Legally. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. That's, that ass crazy. I wish a nigga would talk about Caucasian. Well, you blacker than a motherfucker. Look, nigga. there's a reason why Sammy Sosa is running around here looking like Ricky Ricardo now. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the only one. That <laughs> butt like Subway Turkey. <laughs> 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 man, that's crazy. That nigga was man. crying that day. Bro. I can't believe that nigga did that shit. Yes, man. Yeah. I wonder how he did it though. He just jumped in the pool of bleach. Nah, that shit look like it hurt. Tell you, close Come, your man. eyes. Is it close your eyes tight? <laughs> Real tight. Because if not, tight. <laughs> nah, so he had to do something else. That nigga had to. Be- <laughs>
<laughs> so he had to get like in a reverse air fry or something like that. You like, shit. <laughs> you shit. Ain't no way. Ain't no way, bro. You shit. That nigga there, man. Nah. Man. They do that shit. Handle wax white. They be man, putting shit on their shit skin, crazy. bro. Yeah. Sammy Sosa used to be goddamn dark skin with a jerry curl. Yeah, yeah, man. Pretty Rico Suave, mm-hmm. man. You mm-hmm. nigga go out there and be like. But that butter like, sir, where you took me? But what the fuck is that, man? I don't know. <laughs> he even look like us. Yeah, yeah. He even without that look like J.O.N. <laughs> but a lot of them motherfuckers then started bleaching their skin and shit over there. Yeah. I don't you know. That's, that's heavy over there. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's my man name, the Jamaican artist that did that? Vibes Cartel. Vibes Cartel. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Vibes Cartel yeah. did that. Like, that's what, an OG out there, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that nigga's music is incredible. Yeah, I wonder what he did. They, they world boss. Like Hell Go yeah, crazy. nigga. Mm-hmm. Classic Jamaican shit. Mm-hmm. Damn. Man, listen, like, is there, is there, are you going to do any more of the, the Hidden Color series? Is there I probably won't do no more Hidden Colors because I've done five of them. So I'm right. doing a lot of spinoff series. The next movie I got coming out um, this February is called American Maroon. And that's talking about, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let them know the website where they can get everything. Um, um, you can go to HiddenColorsFilm.com, AmericanMaroonMovie.com, BumpBreakingFilm.com. That's my last film. Um, go to, um, follow me on Twitter, Tariq Nasheed. Follow me on Instagram, Tariq Elite. Now, the m- m- maroon, what is, what is that, the context of that? A maroon, that was people who lived in swamps. They lived in the swamps. They <laughs> ran away from plantations and they fought the slave owners and they would kind of carve out their own lives in the swamps. Um, they were living in Florida, they were living in Louisiana. A lot of those bayou homes, those were old maroon swamps that black people would live in. It came from the Caribbean too. Yeah, yeah, they, they had, um, the Jamaicans still got maroon colonies mm-hmm. up there. And I've been up in those mountains, real shit. They had nanny of the maroons in, the, in Jamaica, real shit. And people just don't talk about that. And those ones who won the fight with the Spaniards. And yeah, that's another and question. Yeah. That's how they got yeah. their independence. Yes, they did. What's some shit that you saw with your own eyes that you didn't believe was real till you saw it? Oh man, you, you, black Asians. Dude, I've been over to Asia, like Malaysia, in the jungles. If you go in the jungles of Asia, I'm talking about far Asia, over there by Japan, all that shit, there's tribes that look like everybody in this room. You know, big ass afros, big noses and big lips, just sitting in the damn jungle. Dude, just chilling. I'm like, damn, you know? For real? real? Yeah, Them jet black tribes uh, with Afro? afros, dude. Afros sitting up there in Asia, chilling, eating fucking fish sandwiches and shit. Chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Living by the river, doing nigga shit. <laughs> chilling, smoking and eating fish. Yeah, I'm like, wow, dude. You know, so that kind of shocked me seeing that in the flesh. So, you know, our presence is all over the world, man. That's crazy. Black Asian. What? Asian. what? Projects. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thug. Hey, wow. <laughs> he said, What? Hey, wow, wow. Them the most <laughs> peaceful niggas you'll ever meet. Yes, indeed. Yes, Chilly, indeed. Too. Yes, indeed. Hey, man, we appreciate you for stopping by, OG. Man, I'm going to watch all the movies. Yeah. Thank you, man. Because yeah, you that book. sat yeah. You yeah. sat and waited on us to. And he sat like a man. He sat yeah, like I mean, a man, too. And, and, and this was like this, and nigga just in the phone. I was like, That nigga prop. You the first person. Yes. The Nazareth gas in the new studio. Hey, when you come back, it ain't gonna look like this, man. Yeah. I love it. It's a beautiful facility, man. Yeah. I'm proud of you, brothers, man. So proud of y'all, bro. Thank you, thank you, man. thank you. Well, there you have it, folks. 85 South Show. Tariq Nashi, we out of here. Love you, man. Yes. Oh, we appreciate it, OG. Man, man, man. I gotta get that book. Man. What's, the, oh, oh, yeah. what's the name of that book again? Which one? Foundational Black and Where? All the Mackin? No, yeah, the Art of Mackin. Yeah, the Art of Mackin. Oh, yeah. I can see y'all all my books. Yeah, yes, please. Because I, I still got my Art of Mackin. Yeah. That's still at my mama house no. right now. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> Oh, cool, cool, cool. Oh, my man, my man, I appreciate you, bro. No. My man, man. Uh, if you don't mind, take my number, man. I don't know that, man. Yes, sir. No doubt, Listen, man. Listen, boy. I'm in contact with you, man. Yes, indeed. That was-